everybody and welcome back to my channel, Sandra's Homespun Life. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a recipe that I kindly crafted in the kitchen to come up with a low carb version of hush puppies. Now these won't be deep fried, they'll be baked in a mini muffin tin, but they taste very, very, very close to your traditional hush puppy, or at least I think so anyway. And I'm sure if you give this recipe a try that you're going to like it. And you can always tweak it to your liking. I'm just going to show you how I make it. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this bowl, I'm going to add two cups of almond flour. But this is a very important step. It makes a world of difference in the texture of the hush puppies once they're done. It gives it a more uh, similar texture to the traditional hush puppy. So I've just got me a little strainer here, and I'm going to measure out two cups of almond flour. So next, I'm just going to gently shake this strainer side to side until all that almond flour has sifted through. As you can tell, this almond flour has a consistency very similar to cornmeal already, so it was really easy to make this recipe. I just tweaked my low-carb Mexican cornbread recipe a little bit. It didn't take much altering at all, and I was very satisfied with the results. Okay, I have a few lumps there, and I'm just taking my spatula and breaking those down finish sifting. Okay, now that I have my almond flour sifted, I'm just going to add the rest of my dry ingredients, and that's going to be one half teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and next I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of the stevia sweetener. Now I bought the kind at Aldi's, and it's working really well so far. Um, it's calorie free. So I'm going to be using two tablespoons of that. I'm just going to use my spatula and give that a quick stir to kind of get all those dry ingredients mixed. Next, I have three large eggs, and I'm just going to take a fork and beat those up. And I'm going to add that to my dry mixture. Next, I'm going to add one half cup of sour cream. And one fourth cup melted butter. So I'm going to use my spatula and just stir that up real well until it's well combined. Okay, now that I have that mixed, I'm going to set it to the side. My next ingredient is going to be some onion. Now, I suggest you cut up your onion to suit your taste. I like my onion cut up real fine, so I'm going to use this little chopper thing here that I recently got at Walmart. It does real good at mincing those onions down real good, but I'm sure if you just want to take a knife and just dice them up small, or if you like little bigger chunks, do that. Make it your own. I'm using one very large onion again. I say do this to how much onion you want to add to yours and make it your own. I have my trash can located under my counter here. And every time I throw something in it when I'm videoing, I feel like people's wondering, is she throwing that in the floor? <laughs> no, I have a trash can down there. Okay, I'm just going to add these chunks into my chopper. If you want to do this recipe and do it by knife, just go ahead and dice yours up. I think I give like maybe five dollars for this and it works really good. The only, pro uh, the only complaint I have with it is on the front. It had a sticker and I wasn't able to get all that sticky off. I have some um, sort of like a degreaser 
I might try to work on it a little bit more and see if I get the rest of that sticker off. Okay, I'll dump those in. So next, I'm just going to take my spatula and mix that up really well to get those onions mixed through the batter. So I've got that mixed well. Next, I'm going to get my muffin tin out, lightly spray it with some cooking spray, and we'll start putting this uh, hush puppy dough over into our little cups. Now I have my muffin tin all sprayed. After I spray it, I like to take a paper towel over top of the outside surface of my muffin tin and wipe that excess oil off. And that just helps preserve the pan and the, the natural shine of it a little bit. Otherwise, over time, that extra bit on the outside will bake down and start turning black. And eventually, it's probably going to end up that way anyway. But <laughs> I try to take care of it and make it last as long as I can. Okay. Take my spatula out of there and put it over in the sink. So now I'm just going to use two teaspoons and fill each one of these cups up with the batter. So I typically try to fill each one of these cups up about 75% full. And then with whatever's left of the batter, I'll go back and try to evenly distribute it to the rest of the cups. So I'm just going to start spooning those in. So I have all my batter into my little cups. I'm just going to take my paper towel again real quick and clean up the little extra batter that went off to the sides of the cup. So now I'm going to place these in the oven. I think the last time I baked these, it took about 20 minutes. It might have took 22, but I'm thinking roughly about 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these in the oven and let them bake for about the 20. And mainly, you know, everybody's oven's a little different. Mine's a convection oven, so if you don't have a convection oven, yours might bake a little differently time-wise. But what you're looking for is a nice golden brown top on the top of these. So off to the oven they go. There they are, guys. Oh, they smell so good. I'm going to allow these to cool, and then I'm going to turn them out onto a cooling rack and allow them to finish cooling. And I'll bring y'all guys back then. Here they are, guys. Oh, they smell so good. I'm going to finish allowing them to cool, and then I can place them in an airtight container until later when we have dinner. Last week when I made these, we had them with, I fixed uh, some lightly breaded catfish on the flat top grill and some low-carb version of coleslaw. And it went together really good. But you know, hush puppies, you don't have to eat them with just fish. Seem like that's the typical go-to. But I bet they'd be good with chili or anything like that. Or just by themselves for a snack. Now, I did the math on these. And according to my ingredients, and the best that I could figure, there's 24 of these muffins. And each one equals out to one and a half net carbs. So that's not bad at all. <laughs> Now, thank you all for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe. Please share out my videos. It helps me out a little bit. And until next time, guys, bye.